So Kamala Harris picks a fellow super lefty in Tim Waltz, the uh, governor of Minnesota, as her running mate. Megan Kelly, like the rest of the world, is shaking her head because now it's two mega lefties versus Trump and Vance. What do you think? I'll tell you, there's a couple things. Number one, this is a clear middle finger to Jews. I believe Shapiro wasn't picked because he's a Jewish man who expressed support for Israel, including back when he was 20, where he wrote the very controversial statement that he doesn't think the Palestinians want peace. Hello? How is that controversial? Look what just happened. But it's too far for the Democrat Party of 2024. He didn't get this because he's a Jewish man. That seems clear to me, and that in and of itself is scary. That's a scary statement coming from an American Democrat Party. That's where they are right now. So what did she go for? She went for someone who's arguably even farther to the left than she is. Minnesota just changed its flag recently to very closely resemble the Somalia flag. It has the highest Somali population of any state in the United States. It's, of course, the state where Ilan Omar is from, one of the most rabid anti-Semites we have in the country, never mind in Congress. And um, that's his state. Not to mention the way he let Minneapolis burn for days on end after the George Floyd killing, just let the riots continue on and on and defended them, saying this is what you're gonna get when you have police who behave like this. This is, this is the way it's gonna go. Just let property owners have their life savings and work burned to the ground in the name of justice, I guess. He's pro driver's licenses for illegals. And on the trans stuff, he is another Gavin Newsom. He is just as bad as Gavin Newsom. He literally signed a bill that says, your child can be taken away from you if you do not get him or her, quote, gender affirming care. And what he meant, he spelled it out, was puberty blockers, uh, cross-sex hormones, and surgeries. So if your minor child, because he's autistic, because he's being bullied, because he's having some sort of social adjustment problems, comes home and says, I think I'm a girl and I want estrogen and I want sterilization drugs, basically puberty blockers into cross-sex and I want my penis chopped off. Your 14 year old boy, if you do not say yes, Governor Waltz wants him taken away from you. That's a law that he signed. He also has mandated tampons in the bathroom in the boys' rooms. This is who she picked. And this is not an old man. He's 60. So is she. So this is the Democrats saying, this is the kind of leadership we want set up for the next 16 years. She could be an eight-year president. He could be the eight years after that, and they'd still both be younger than we have over on Team Trump, not to mention what Biden was. So this is genuinely scary how far left this guy is. And don't be fooled. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing. He's got a folksy manner. He ran in a blue state, but in initially in a red district in Minnesota for Congress and won, which is what first got him some attention in the Democrat Party. He's a blue guy who can win in red communi communities. And Minnesota, while a red, well, sorry, a blue state is not far left. So it, you know, the fact that he's a governor of a, it's not purple, but it's not like a New York or a Vermont or a California. So I think that's also gonna have appeal. It's sandwiched right there by Wisconsin and Michigan. So they think it'll have like a bleed over effect, but it'll, it'll help her in the Midwestern states in the Rust Belt in which J.D. Vance is you know, supposed to be so appealing and I think is. So he comes to this with National Guard service. Uh, he was a high school geography teacher. Uh, you know, he's sort of like this guy who talks the way everybody talks, like a normal guy. He's the guy who coined the J.D. Vance is weird. Republicans are weird phrase, which went so viral. It was just like such a natural phrase. And people are like, yeah, that's how we talk. Yeah, they are weird. That, that, that one phrase could have gotten him chosen. That plus the fact that he's not a Jew. And um, so people say, yeah, he seems normal. He's like a normie norm, unlike Kamala, who does not seem normal at all. But he, I, honestly, he might be further to the left than she is. We don't know because she's disavowing all of her most radical policy uh, positions through a campaign spokesperson. She herself hasn't spoken to any of this. So we really have no idea what her true feelings are on anything. But him, him we know. And it's scary.
Well, it also seems that, look, he's, he's a woke wolf in sheep's clothing, and he has this rhetorical device that so many politicians on the left use in particular, which is when they spit in the face of tradition, they turn around and say, well, that's just you just starting a culture war. In fact, uh, one of the quotes about the flag change, right, which clearly was done, as you say, for the changing population, quote, well, Republicans are going to be talking about this, I'm going to be building roads, bridges and water treatment plants. While Republicans are going to be talking about this, I'm going to be making sure that kids are eating and we are creating jobs. Now, this is that perfect example, right, which is they come up, they slap you in the face, and then when you react to the slap in the face, you're the one with the problem. This in any other format is known as gaslighting, and I think you may well be able to do it when the city outrates the uh, outrates the regional areas where the local media is wanting to play like New York or LA but this stuff doesn't work in some of the states that we know will decide the presidency um I don't think this sort of, uh, you know, you're just a culture warrior while I'm getting on with the real stuff actually works I think people call bullshit on that pretty quickly don't they I don't think that, you know, those right-leaning independents who they're trying to win are going to fall for that for one bit. They're on board with the culture war. They know exactly who started it, and they want to return to normalcy. They certainly don't want to lose custody of their children because they don't want to allow them to have gender, quote, affirming surgeries, which means totally healthy body parts chopped off and infertility when you're 13 years old. That is not how any normie independent feels, and that's what this is a battle for. Um, I do think, though, Paul, on the bright side, this is a great pick for the Republicans. I think the Republicans are going to feel very invigorated by this choice. It's a much better pick for them than had it been Josh Shapiro, who is like a white Obama. He's, you know, he's inspirational. If you listen to him talk, he's like, eh, we, we need hope. People can't survive without hope. He talks like Obama. He's trying to style himself after Obama. And let's not forget, he's the governor of the most critical swing state in this election, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> so the fact that it's not Shapiro is a gift to the Republicans in and of itself. And then the fact that she went far left on the choice is a, a second gift that they will be able to exploit mightily over the coming weeks and months. It's kind of interesting to me, if you look at it, it's almost similar to what Trump did. You know, he chose somebody in his own model in J.D. Vance, and then so did she. The difference is Trump is a moderate, Paul. Trump's a moderate, and so is J.D. Vance. Both of these guys ruffle feathers amongst the conservative right because they're not far enough to the right. They're pro some big government programs, in particular the ones that are going to help the working class. That's the middle finger that the working class gave to the Republican Party elites back in 16, again in 20, but not in big enough numbers, and now again with Trump's renomination and J.D. Vance's. And so she's kind of done the same thing that Trump has, but I think not in as smart a way, because J.D. Vance, while he said some controversial things, as we've discussed, childless cat ladies, whatever, he's not calling for this kind of radical behavior by the state over parents and private citizens. And I do think like picturing a Waltz Vance debate is kind of delicious. It's the first time I've been salivating a little bit since we saw the collapse of the Democratic candidacy in Joe Biden.